Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi everyone, welcome back again to the online NPTEL course on structure, form and architecture, the synergy. Uh, today we are at lecture number 39 and we will be discussing on some of the mega structure uh, high rise buildings and we will try to see their architectural form and structural arrangement. In last two lectures we have discussed on different uh, structural system, uh, specially classified uh, under the category of exterior structure and interior structure for high rise building and we have seen their application, how you know different height can be achieved, how different uh, resistant, resistant structure can be formed with those uh, that we have discussed in detail. Now in this lecture we will basically focus on um, some examples, we will take very few examples and then we will try to understand that structural system used in this structure, uh, these examples. And with that, uh, what will be your task after this to find more such information, uh, such more case studies which can have different structural system that we discussed in uh, our previous discussions like exterior structure or interior structures. So, let us start today's discussion on mega structure case study. Uh, so, in this slide uh, I have uh, you know picked up four examples and we will be discussing on these four examples about their structural arrangement, architectural form and different systems. And I guess that these all four examples are known to you and takes few moments and just uh, check whether you know these buildings or not. If you know it is great, but if not then also after this discussion I think these four examples will be uh, remembered by all of you because we will discuss in detail. So, let us start one by one. So, the first uh, building uh, I think all of you got this uh, on the left hand side uh, of uh, this particular uh, thing that it is your uh, Shanghai Tower. The second one is Burj Khalifa, third one is one World Trade Center in New York and the last one is your Marina Bay uh, Sands in Singapore. So, we will be discussing one after another. Let us start with the Shanghai Tower in China. Uh, this is basically a different concept by which this building was made. Its tower if you look into this slide that uh, here it says uh, it is a city within city concept. So, when we started discussing the need of high rise structures, one particular point I told that okay, with uh, rapid urbanization with the high demand of uh, you know accommodation and housing, it is very difficult to go for horizontal expansion with a constant situation. That is why like high rise will accommodate and can meet the demand to extent. But at the same time, uh, not only residing in a building, but we all also need to uh, do some activity, we need to move from one place to another place for shopping activity or maybe some official activities. So, for that it would be uh, something great if we can get those facilities and you know wh what is a daily a day, a day to day basis activities within close proximity. So, with this concept this has been done here like this is uh, basically a city within a city comprising of 9 vertical zones. So, uh, if you see the building, this building is uh, having a height of 632 meter and then uh, if you can consider the floors above ground it is 124. This is really a tall structure uh, and uh, if you see that this the whole height is being divided in several zones and each will uh, have say 12 to 15 story and different function being assigned. Some of them are maybe the hotels, maybe restaurant, 
shops and some of them are uh, the hotel rooms for the residential purpose. So, public space and shops, restaurant and other urban amenities strategically located at the floors with public atriums and normally that to be uh, open for all. Again, this is a new way of you know inhabiting super tall towers. Uh, uh, the concept, the upper floors will have you know uh, you know hotels, then you have cultural venues and observation deck from uh, which you can actually uh, see the entire uh, city. Coming to the structural system, in this uh, as we have uh, discussed earlier in the um, example of exterior structure and interior structures. In this case, it is uh, the structural form that being used is the core tube structure. So, tube structure if you recall recently what we have discussed that uh, where you can place up columns with very close interval and then they are being connected with the spandrel beam. So, that will form as a tube. Along with that uh, what they have used in different height is the bell truss and then also uh, as external column they have given some mega columns. And then at different height if you can see those portions they have uh, used the outriggers trusses which will actually help to resist again the wing loads wherever they uh, have uh, you know changing the sections of that. Now, coming to the plan, it is very simplistic uh, plan as we have discussed here in this core tube. So, this is basically the core I was talking about and how uh, it is being connected. So, this tube is uh, there at the core and then you have some mega columns which is running through and then at different height uh, maybe at uh, with say um, uh, 15, 20 floors height. So, they have used the bell truss at this system which is making it strong. So, here you can see the under construction building where you can easily identify those areas where uh, you know those bell truss being used. Now, coming to the next example, uh, uh, before coming to this example, let also discuss the profile that building uh, it started with a larger cross section and then at a certain height uh, the cross section also get reduced and this is basically to tackle the um, lateral load. So, basically when we discussed uh, the shape like um, a pyramid shape or conical shape which will have a better uh, um, performance against the wind load, heavy wind load at the top and then reduction in mass at the upper story definitely help to make the structure more stable. So, in this uh, the combination of the tube, coat tube, the shear wall tube and then outrigger truss, some mega columns at different portion is really uh, making the structure uh, you know stable. Now, if I ask you a question that um, considering the plan, the structural arrangement where we can fit this building, whether it is uh, your interior structure or exterior structure. Uh, so, in judgment you have this uh, majority of the lateral load sharing portion is inside that core tube core. So, we may classify into interior structure, but at the same time uh, like we have some mega columns at uh, the exterior at the periphery. So, what would be the answer? So, what I want you to just give uh, the logic or what what you think that how we can classify or it is something new uh, kind of type where both can be given equal weightage. So, uh, I am expecting that kind of uh, feedback comment from your side. Coming to this example and definitely with uh, the set uh, like all other buildings in this. So, this is really giving uh, dominance and it is giving a feeling of standing alone or very strong um, appearance with this shell hood. So, Burj Khalifa it is in uh, Dubai 
Now, in this case, earlier also I have mentioned the concept has been taken a little bit from the bundle tube structure, where we have uh, discussed some other examples where like uh, you have multiple tube um, when they together and then you just change the cross section at the top. But it is not exactly the bundle tube, uh, here it is some modified uh, structure being used and a Y shape uh, building plan is being formed with a hexagonal core at the middle. So, this is also referred as the buttressed uh, core and this is having uh, one uh, major applica uh, no, implication that is this Y form of the plan that uh, we'll discuss, we can uh, see this plan. So this Y form having a core, hexagonal core, it is not only giving a good stability with uh, three legs uh, kind of arrangement, but also it is maximizing the amount of perimeter. So this is one of uh, the good. Uh, aerodynamic profile that we can have. This also allow when you set uh, your rooms at upper story in both the uh, you know in these wings we can refer these wings. So, we can place the rooms uh, on the corner. So, all can get some external view uh, without really disturbing or without having uh, any disturbance to the privacy to the neighbor. So, this is one form that where we can maximize the view, whereas in a closed form structure if we take something like this. So, if it is a double loaded corridor, so then definitely we cannot get a proper view for hotels. Now, in this case again the exterior cladding and aluminum texture stainless glass being used to make uh, this building, uh, the outer surface which uh, are found very efficient uh, considering the extreme weather condition uh, especially in summer in Dubai context. And here if you see that uh, the floors above ground it is 163 uh, floors have been made and the total height is uh, uh, 8 to 9, uh, so almost 830 uh, meters, wherever the architectural height is a uh, little bit low uh, if you just have considered the habitable space. But in this, the height occupied is only up to 585 meter. Now, this is the plan I was talking about, and if you see that the plan, how it uh, going to change, where it is a similar core is being continued. So, if you find that this core hexagonal core is there, so this is very predominant this core it is continuing, but uh, the wings they become very shorter and it is happening uh, with very systematically. So, we get the form of again a conical shape in this category. Now, this is a detailed view. So, what I was talking about this shear walls and this core is facilitating to get a better view for all, all the hotels that being uh, all the you know uh, residential areas uh, very much you know attractive to get this view. So, this is Y shaped uh, structure is called buttressed core uh, with this. This is under construction building where you can see that the core is. Uh, being made here and the wing they are actually uh, under construction. Now, coming to the next uh, example, this is from uh, your um, World Trade Center uh, in New York. So, in this case again this structure is having a uh, height like story of 94 and uh, height of 546. Uh, up to the top, but the occupied height is only up to 386. In this case, uh, it is a massive structure where the main structure being made with a concrete uh, core and where the moment frame consisting of beam and columns uh, is 
used they are welded and bolted and that being used in this structure. Now, massive concrete core shear wall and the moment frame uh, they all together is giving the better uh, you know resistance against the lateral load also the axial gravity load. So, they combine in combined manner giving the rigidity and adding the steepness to the building. But applying the core uh, is basically what is related to your interior structure. So, the major uh, uh, structural element which will take the major portion of the lateral load uh, and axial load being placed inside as a concrete core in this building uh, is definitely to be categorized as the interior structure. Now, if this is so, then uh, my question is the you know example we have taken uh, for the Burj Khalifa, what would be the exterior or interior? Again, I leave it to you and um, you give your comment and justification why you think that that is there and we will get back uh, to the whose answer and we will discuss on uh, you know uh, whenever we may have uh, some forum discussion then we will uh, share it with you. Now, in this case uh, this flexibility uh, is always uh, a problem for uh, the structure where we use the exterior one. Whenever you use a heavy column or very closely uh, spaced uh, column like tube structure, so that will hinder the external view uh, that is one problem. And also, if you have a very uh, you know regular frame structure column with regular interval, so the interior space will have some constant. We cannot get a columnless space. But whereas in this case, uh, huge massive core being used, so that like the other uh, requirement of columns can be reduced and the interior space can be used in a better way. That's uh, the you know point of this kind of frame and core structure. Coming to the form again uh, that we have discussed earlier uh, during like the building shapes and their requirement in earthquake prone or seismic prone areas and there I have made a comment like uh, you know simpler the plan is better the performance and this is so true in this case also the, uh, in this building it, it has taken uh, uh, it has taken a very basic shape and then the, uh, just is uh, playing with the basic shape, not really very curved shape or something where core uh, the core is being a constant element and then there is some rotation at some upper floor. So, at the ground floor if you see the core is uh, something like uh, there and then this will continue uh, with a very straight uh, form, not exactly the square form, but with the samper. Uh, with the 45 degree angle and then this shape again evolved to some kind of uh, what we can get here is the octagonal form. So, uh, this is transforming to the octagonal form uh, after a certain time and then at the top again it changes. So, that will give the profile of the building. Now, one thing is also important for high rise structure along with uh, the structural stability and all the services are very important issue like how people can evacuate in case of emergency, in case of fire, in case of uh, your earthquake this is one or even to day to day activity. If this uh, I am staying in 100th floor and I just want to get down, so using stair we cannot think of this kind of uh, you know situation uh, like definitely we need some kind of vertical uh, movement, vertical um, uh, mobility. So, that can be served with either escalator or maybe sometimes uh, most of the cases it is with the lift or the elevator. But for a high rise building definitely if you have a single lift that is uh, from ground to the top level, it is not really uh, solving our issues. Then the unnecessary waiting time will be there, people will not really liking that. So, we have to separate the zones like this if you see in this slide that zone has been divided and then 
different elevator uh, like some express elevator they will have some you know uh, restriction. This may be something which will uh, stop at different alternate level or else depending on the initial few levels you have one then from there you get another one. So, like that this zoning is very much important for this. So, as true for the services of the pipe system, the service floor is also required for this kind of high rise structures like how you can supply the water, how you can uh, take uh, the waste out of the toilet or kitchen because with that height if you just normally allow uh, the water to come to the first floor. So, you cannot take that pressure and how to really control the pressure. So, there are some system the mechanical system these are very important. So, if you are interested to know the services uh, of the high rise structure definitely you look into those uh, you know resources which is available in a book form and even I have mentioned about uh, a book here. The tall building reference book. So, if you can get access to this book uh, through library or maybe uh, if it is available in some forum. So, you can go through this book and you can definitely uh, get much more idea on uh, this kind of services and the system. Now, coming to uh, uh, the construction again, the structure is very simple straightforward, but along with that the frame and also you can see that in this section that in different segment uh, we have this outriggers uh, uh, trusses or bale trusses at different level. Now, here you can see that how the thick in the uh, you know concrete core is running through and through and different services being clubbed together. Definitely when you go up then uh, the number of lifts and the uh, you know quantity of people to be served like that also varies and accordingly that plan has to be made. This is a under construction photograph that I have picked up. In this case, uh, this external staircase that egress uh, staircase um, is also very you know having strong impact on that that is attached to this. So, in case of emergency it can easily uh, you know helping this. So, basic form is giving uh, this kind of you know advantage to club some kind of stair uh, through and uh, through fire staircase or egress staircase. and helping the structure to perform in a better manner. With that moving to the last example uh, in this discussion that is your uh, Marina Bay Sand Hotels in Singapore. So, this is very nice uh, photograph that um, like I have picked up uh, at least I liked it much. So, where you can see that uh, three uh, structures multi story building uh, it is holding another horizontal slab at some higher altitude. So, this is something where it is not like others where only one building has made with a you know high rise and then a core is designed. So, here it is something where at this height um, means the challenges are very much uh, more uh, than compared to the single building where the system to be designed for the only single tower. Now, looking into the height, so this height is not that much compared to the other buildings that we have discussed today. So, the height is uh, around uh, you know uh, 200 meter that you can see and the floors again it is considered to be low and three towers they are, are looking identical and they are holding a particular slab at the top. Now, in this case uh, two converging slab of east and west facing rooms make up each tower what exactly this is. So, uh, for that we need to require uh, this particular section. So, this is one this is another one and uh, this can be uh, you know fixed uh, or this can stand separately, but in this case these two uh, slab they are making some arrangement 
like this okay to giving the stability so this is like when we have discussed the racking shore so this kind of arrangement is uh, giving the stability to the tower now two converging slab of east west facing room make up the each tower each tower slab form is also twisted slightly in relation to its pair so that it will give a dance like relationship that is the visual aesthetics uh, being done with this kind of arrangement so in order to stability we just uh, make the arrangement like this uh, where the building is getting this shape and then also it will help to accentuating the slenderness of the building. So, that uh, in both the cases like it will give the stability as well as the beauty. Linking three towers as I already mentioned that was the challenge because this is not at the ground floor normally you know many buildings we get uh, the heavy base at the bottom and then you have the tower. But in this case it is at the top. So, this particular portion. Uh, to raise these and there is a portion of the cantilever. Um, so, that is definitely a good engineering that we made to create it. So, coming to the section already what we have discussed that again it is having uh, the frame structure and then uh, this is the cross section that uh, something like this if you want to see from this side. So, this is the profile where the structural arrangement is something like that, it is not very straight. So, this is giving some stability to the structure. Coming to the plan, again the plan is uh, simple, yes, but it is not uh, exactly in a linear form, uh, rather it is giving some kind of radial axis. And here you can see this is actually the top floor where different uh, you know water uh, swimming pool type water body being created and then there are some uh, roof gardening has been done. But if you see uh, just the you know these towers, so you will get a very uh, symmetrical tower that being placed one after another is a very basic form that has been taken here. And then uh, this uh, the upper slab is, is being placed on top of it. So, like that uh, in this case the building uh, height is not that much comparable to uh, the other examples I have taken and these are very few again I am saying. So, if you search of the tallest uh, like tallest at 20 that I have also shown in the previous presentation um, when we discuss the evolution of structural system then you can find n number of list uh, there which are having like more than 100 story and like say for example type uh, 101 you can um, search or else you can go for the petronas tower even some cases uh, you can get even high, higher and some of the buildings are under construction but the last example i have included uh, purposefully to show the complexity it is not about uh, the tower also to hold this and that can be formed. So, here the basic idea to create this tower uh, where this lake uh, kind of form being created. So, this angle is giving some kind of extra stability to the structure. Now, coming to the summary in this case uh, this is something where we have seen different structural system for uh, particular building. So, again if we just uh, quickly look into this. So, when we discussed about the first example of the Shanghai tower, then where we have found that again the basic form uh, has been taken and then uh, the structural system has been designed with uh, a core and that core is tube core. So, we are talking about the Shanghai tower. Okay. And along with that there is some uh, you know mega columns at the periphery and then along with that we have some out triggers, bell truss at different height and the whole tower is being um, like divided in different zone 
where different purpose is different uh, you know activity like shopping then you, know, you have some restaurant then you have hotel so this has been classified and that is with the concept of city within city tower coming to the next example of uh, the burj khalifa uh, this is also similar to the bundle tube but here the structural system that is being used uh, as a y form and then uh, a hexagonal core at this and it is referred to the buttressed buttressed core structure and now the form is being taken with some advantage in this case like uh, if you have uh, this kind of y shape form and then the wind prevailing wind direction is from this so it will direct the wind uh, in a systematic manner. So, this aerodynamic form is giving a better result compared to a square one or maybe something of the other kind. So, this y is giving uh, a better um, resistance you know against uh, better resistant uh, towards your uh, lateral loads uh, especially the wind. And then again like at the top with the, this basic form this flows being reduced so that the mass is being reduced at the top so that we can get a structure uh, like this like a you know a conical shape. Now then what we have discussed on the one world uh, trade center there we have found again a basic form being taken where almost square is formed with the sample uh, at uh, the corner being taken and then gradually like it evolved with uh, octagonal shape and again it will come to a very uh, basic shape at the top and then the form being created. So, in that case uh, what being used? So, again a core system the concrete core uh, being used at the middle along with the frame and then uh, at different height the outriggers been also placed and along with that in the building what we have seen that uh, egress staircase which is uh, very strong and protective uh, staircase being placed which is also adding some kind of uh, steepness to the building. The last one that we have uh, discussed with this hotel uh, the Marina Bay sands in Singapore, there is basically a tower, three towers they are holding a heavy mass at the top and giving a different view with the angle in order to get the better stability and uh, improve the slenderness of this particular tower. So, what uh, has been done here? So, the two slabs like uh, they are one is very straight and the other one uh, having some kind of bending. So, this is giving a support increasing the base so that uh, this will have the better stability. And the, again the basic form being repeated with little bit twist to get a uh, aesthetic beauty of a dance like form uh, in this building. So, these are four mega structure example that I have uh, picked up for demonstration. And again if I want to classify, so the first one again uh, that is open to you also like here it may be interior structure as because we have that tube core or also we have uh, some heavy column at the periphery. So, that may also lead to the exterior structure where in this case predominantly it will be of the interior structure because this core is being made at, uh, at the center. And for again uh, if we go for the world uh, Trade center, one world trade center, again it is predominantly the concrete core and um, that is al also helping to you know reduce the number of columns unnecessary to have flexibility in the interior planning of the building. Whereas, in this case again it is having the core system for the each tower, uh, it is not the core system uh, in this case. So, uh, in this example what you get that the code is not at the middle, so the code at the side. Uh, so, when we discussed about different code positions, so the it can be splitted, it can be a one end 
like this. So, this is uh, very simple and as because the story is not that much compared to the other buildings. So, the system is uh, again the core and along with the frame structure, but uh, the main challenge was to take the load that being calculated and that is resting on top of it. So, this kind of form, this kind of base, uh, this particular tiltation is uh, creating uh, the stability, adding the stability to the building. So, with that I conclude here and we are almost uh, at the verge of completing this particular course and we will be discussing uh, uh, the next lecture on the architecture and the structure, uh, the past, uh, the present and the future historic architecture. So, we will be discussing on that. Before that like uh, these are the study material and this is very uh, useful document and this is one uh, you know edited book that you can um, always refer to get more idea about the tall building and just uh, search about that book in your library and already if it is there or if it is subscribed uh, by your institutions and then you can easily get uh, some more information from that. And we will be discussing, we will be merging whatever the discussion that uh, we had over last uh, you know few weeks uh, will be summarizing this and we will try to compare uh, that uh, what we actually you know uh, have progressed from the primitive age with the stone hinge to the modern uh, architecture and again the futuristic architecture of you know very high end applying very high end engineering. So, we will be discussing that in the next lecture and again before uh, you know con concluding this. I would like to thank you all to take part in this course very actively and we will be meeting in the next lecture. Thank you.